That's one for you being framed, isn't it? Ah, the wedding ring is the ancient and traditional way of sealing vows you have both just made. It is an unbroken circle that symbolises unending and everlasting love and is the outward sign of the lifelong promise that you made to each other today. Okay, please, if you take the ring, you can present, please. <coughs> I give you this ring, give you this ring, as a symbol of my love and affection. As a symbol of my love and affection. Wear it with happiness always. Wear it with happiness always. Okay, place it all the way to your fingers.
friends, I'm going for my wife and I. I suppose I'm going to have to get used to that. <laughs> I'd like to start by thanking everyone here today for sharing our very special day with us. Thank you for all your wonderful gifts and cards you've given us. And we're very touched with your generosity. I'd also like to thank a few other very special people who today would not have been possible. First of all, to my new wife, Di. We've been, we've been engaged for nearly 14 years, and some said today we would never come to that. For them, you know, it'll be 20 quid. <laughs> Even you said that? Yeah. <laughs> Di, you look amazing today, as everyone will agree. And I'm proud to stand here and officially call you my wife. <laughs> then to my special stepdaughter, who dies maid of honour, Janet. You've helped us with almost everything arranged the wedding. You've been amazing, and thank you. <laughs> Moving on to my best friend, Dave, Ben. Massive thank you for sorting my sag do. Well, we got there in the end, didn't we? Three hours late. But I'm sorry, crappy, I'm but, sorry, but I'm sorry. Again. <laughs> To my mum and dad, you supported me throughout my life, and I'm so happy that you're both here to share today and enjoy this very special day. Thank you. Also, I'd like to thank Rocco, Daniel, Wendy, Joe, Christy, Kian, Indiana, and Noel. And also a massive thank you to Shell and Ian for everything you've done for us. <laughs> do you want to do it? <laughs> Unfortunately, it's not been possible to have anyone here today, but we know they're here, here with us in space and not only in our thoughts today, but more importantly, they're with us in our hearts. So, with that in mind, I would like you all to stand, raise your glasses, and join me, and raise a toast to absent family and friends. Absolutely, family and friends. Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Yeah, just just You can have it in the bed. No. No. Sorry, mate. Sorry. Are you ready? Sorry, yeah, yeah, we're okay. Are we doing this now? You okay? Just gonna have some guests out here. Well then.
for both of you, so thank you. Thank you. <laughs> for those who don't know me, I'm Dave, Steve's brother. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, before I came here today, one of my good friends gave me some advice on giving a speech. Oh. Steve over there, actually. <laughs> he said, think of it like walking through a nudist camp. It's only hard for the first minute. <laughs> a few months ago, Steve said, I really don't want you to speak at my wedding, but you're the only brother I have. <laughs> when I was about two, my mum and dad gave me a baby brother, Steve. I wanted a puppy. <laughs> Growing up with Steve and Fenton was great fun. Yes, we had our ups and downs like most kids. By 1974, mum and dad gave me Steve a baby sister, Wendy. We weren't that bothered. We both would have been a puppy. In the 1970s and early 80s, we were always out playing, and Steve loved his shopping. <laughs> uh, for the younger guests, that's uh, a bike. <laughs> it was a bike. <laughs> it was, it was a bike. <laughs> sorry, man, sorry. <laughs> we had almost the same group of great friends. <laughs> we had almost the great... Great friends back then. We were either chasing football or chasing girls. I must say, Steve was better at football. <laughs> <laughs> but not as good as our mate Grudge. <laughs> kids being kids, I remember it, 79, 80, when Steve and our cousin Will set fire to some fields in Port Lane opposite Grudge's house. <laughs> and then phoned the fire brigade and then Alton put it out, and then they both were praised by the firemen. <laughs> put it out. Unbelievable, but true. <laughs> Moving forward to Steve and myself having I mean, afternoon meetings every Friday about 2.30, sometimes till 12 p.m. Yeah, great laughs with other friends and playing pool. Oh, and this lady behind the bar named Diane, who my brother got his eye on. 
If you had a conversation with Steve back then, he would have one eye on you and the other on Diane. <laughs> he looks a little bit like Marty Thorman. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case you don't do that. Is. <laughs> <laughs> this must have gone on for months. Before I knew it, he had joined the pool team on a Wednesday night, Monday's darts team, Tuesday's scrim, Thursday's on the road, Sunday night, what's the band? He was always there. It was his second home. In fact, their son was conceived on a Wednesday. They called him Rocco Middle Pocket Miles. Diane, although you've been a part of our family for over 18 years now and share with many great times together, like the time on holiday at Edinburgh with me and Steve having to carry you with your broken leg, absolutely smashed, back to the caravan, and mum and Wendy having to assist you to the toilet. Yeah, that's a big nap down a bit. One of many great times, Diane. So I'd like to finally and officially welcome you to the family. And please, if anybody wishes to dance with Diane, please be careful because she breaks you. <laughs> I'm so happy you two found each other. And I'm glad I didn't get that puppy. I love you, bro. Congratulations to both of you. I wish you a lifetime of love and happiness together. Congrats. A toast to the bride and groom. Yamas, Saul. Saul. First of all, ladies and gents, last and last, ladies and gents, I miss it. I miss these rides. Give a round of applause. Seeing that today has been amazing so far, and in the famous words of Doreen, things will only get better. <laughs> You, took, you, you two have chosen a fantastic venue today for your special day. I'm sure it's been everything you wished for and more. And I'd like to speak on behalf of everybody else here in the room today and say thank you for letting us share your special day with us. I'm about to get a little bit of a big mouth, thanks to you. And we're the best man to speak to say that you should unload both comedy barrels on the room. However, I'm not really that good with guns, but I definitely know the suit of gentleman who is. Well, some say Steve, some say, some say. Uh, now, Steve's already mentioned this, you sort of stole his thunder a little bit, but I know that there are some people who aren't with us today but wish it could be. And unfortunately, as I say, they aren't. And even though they're not with us in body, I know that they will be with us in spirit. So I'd like to raise the glass. As Steve already mentioned, Family and friends. Cheers. Cheers. Now for all of you that don't now for all of you that don't know me, I'm now proud to stand here and say that I'm officially both Diane and Steve son in law and my name is Ben. <laughs> if you don't know me, of course. And I'd like to thank Steve for giving me the honour of being one of his best men. Now they say that the best man's speech should last as long as it takes the groom to make love. It's a rewarding way out. Cheers. Your honesty to Steve means a lot to me that you've given me the honour of being the best man. The sad thing was great, they enjoyed by all of us, which you all agree. Even if getting there was a slight remake of playing the strings and all the other years. I know you did proud and gave you the great send off that you deserve from the Liverpool. And what I have to say, what stays on tour, I mean, what happens on tour, stays on tour. Yeah. However, the pension of Steve Mac keeps ringing me and asking me to So you please give her a ring back, she's looking for them too. Now, Dad, I know you're more than normal, this has been a weird thing to say, but today that will be really useful. Please don't hold that against me. Alright, I'm sure everybody will agree. 
As to both the bridesmaids and the flower girl, but my wife to say that is a married one for the same. That one basically lives in my house anyway. So, you know. <laughs> now looking back to the first time that I met Jenny, she told me that mum and dad got the woman set that round the pub. And he said that usually about circles, so to say I was a little bit concerned with some of these things. Uh, but I went around and I remember the first day sitting there, walking in, meeting Diane and Steve. <coughs> well, I was a little bit nervous. They were walking around, meeting Diane and Steve. And after a few minutes of standing there, chatting with them both, I was more terrified of dying than I was of Steve. <laughs> I also remember the time when we went around and we sat watching TV and you were there as well. And within a few minutes of sitting on the sofa, Dad said to me, she said, you have to sit back close. I said, well, yeah, it's a three seat sofa and it's three people sitting on the floor, it's a good. Um, yeah, we did it. Over the past two decades, well, you don't really feel too old, um, you've, been both, you've been there both for me and Jenny, and the kids whenever we need you, whether on family holidays, get togethers, and moments of silence, both you and I will only recall away, and I'm um, forever grateful for that, thank you. Looking back on the times of the call, giving you a ring on a Saturday morning, and asking you how, how did you fix the kitchen time? You say, don't worry mate, I'll be around in a minute, we'll get it sorted. Which consisted of me and you spending the entire weekend playing the Mario Brothers, driving around so concerned, trying to find the right connectors and parts and blocks, you know, but I really appreciate that. And in more recent times, you've been fantastic grandparents, both in here and all. We all know weekly visits to Nanny, Grandad, Grandad Bowles, Grandad Silly Sausage, you know, whatever you decide to prefer you on that day. Now, according to Steve's Facebook profile, he states, and he studies adult movie making and he's a high school. Now as a former and high school people, I hope your exploits, Steve, didn't include any former students in that school. For obvious reasons. If you know what that means, of course you can see a bar on that space you over a drink. Don't explain to me. Now I don't want to stay too much of your drinking time, so I'll we'll keep the rest brief. He's been running the best, I don't know, on the sweets are going to last, and I've got 50 quid on two hours and 16 minutes. So I'll be honest with you, tuck yourselves in and get yourselves comfortable. <laughs> now something special happened on September the 14th, 1968. 35,000 people crammed into a packed sports and park to watch West Ham United play at Tottenham Hotspur. The team signed up with some greats, including Pat Jennings and Cole, Teddy Venables in the field and the late great Jimmy Greaves up top. The game was a hotly fought affair. <coughs> With Martin Peters and Jeff Hurst putting West Ham 2 0 up, Jimmy Greaves set up Alan Gil Gilsey. He's not even pronounced the third one, and sort of shandy drinkers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. To make it 2 1 before Jimmy Greaves scored the equaliser himself. There was no winning, to be honest, absolutely nothing much special happened. It was back up the M6, where he did. Now, Madden, well, now gave birth to a beautiful baby boy named Steve Rhines. <laughs> With a B or a PH now? No. With a B or a PH? It doesn't have to be a little bit of 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 a little no, it wasn't, it wasn't down the road, it was back at the M6 where Mal gave birth to the resort boys as I mentioned Steve Rouse. Now I'd like to thank Mal and Ken for bringing such a wonderful, caring, hard-working and dedicated son like Dave and Steve. <laughs> Welcome to Steve. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I don't want to see Steve as a father in law, Steve as a friend and mentor, and all both you and I to pieces. Thank you for giving me this great honour again for being your best man. Steve as a father in law and a friend, I just want to let you know 
that may not be that, that your evolution has done. I will be straight on to your house, and I'll tell you to snap around the street. <laughs> if you're ever lost, I'll survive you. I'll be out looking for you, mate. So it's all straight. In his car, Evan, when the pools break down, just to let you know, I'll be there to see you. <laughs> when life gives you lemons, I'll be there to help me make lemonades. No matter what the obstacles life may throw you, I'll be by your side. And last thing, despite what everybody says, is I think you're all right. The last thing is last to Mr. and Mrs. Wales. Score, score. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs>